Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a motion graph like the one that you see on, on the screen right now using Google Sheets. This is a completely optional step of the CAM design process, but it is nice to know how to use spreadsheets. It's a skill your students will appreciate having um, regardless of whether they do a, you know, have a career in engineering or not. Um, Remember what we're doing is we're taking basically this picture that we created in a previous video. We've already drawn a hand-drawn graph of this. This looks pretty nice and neat. To be honest, this is probably above and beyond what most of the students will turn in. But we have used this graph after telling a story. We created the graph first and then you can see those dotted lines. We use those to extrapolate and get some, some data points out of them. And I've taken those data points now and I've put them into... A Google Sheet. So that's where we are right now. We have the left cam on the, in blue and the right cam in, in orange and we have the angle of rotation going in 45 degree increments upward from 0 to 360. So what I'm going to do here um, for the sake of time I'm just going to copy paste this into a different sheet and kind of walk you through the process. Again this is optional but it is nice to know. Um, first things first I don't like how that looks so I'm going to go through I'm just going to highlight these cells. I'm going to double click between columns A and B let it resize the thing for me that way everything kind of fits it's visible. Um, I've already made everything you know centered and I've, I've done a lot of formatting you'll notice. Um, bolded titles things like that you know little things like that if you demonstrate them to your students uh, your students will start to mimic those over time you hope. Um, what we're going to do here though is we're going to highlight all three of these columns at the same time and we're going to go up here Notice, by the way, again, before we go on, X coordinate is on the left. The Y coordinates are on the right. That is important because it's going to try to guess at what you're getting ready to do. We're going to insert a chart. Now, it tries to guess at what kind of chart we want. That is not the kind of chart we want. It's not a column chart. So we're going to come over here to chart type, and we're just going to look for the picture that looks correct. It looks like it's this with this smooth line chart. Here we go. So line graph. Um, smooth line chart is what it's called, excuse me, on Google Sheets as opposed to a scatter plot on Microsoft Excel. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. And the rest of this video is just going to be formatting. So you can stick around with me if you want to, but you know, I mean, if you're happy with that, you can go on if you want to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm just going to customize some things like the chart style. I like that. I'm going to leave it chart axis, um, the title. I'm going to go ahead and change the title. I'm going to get rid of this left cam thing. I'm going to make it say vertical displacement versus angle of rotation. That way we have the two variables mentioned in our title. And I think that that's nice. Oops. Okay, there we go. Degrees. Um, next, I'm going to go down to the series. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add some points on this and say... Uh, that's too small. Well, that's too big. Let's go like four pixels. See what that looks like. All right, that's pretty good size. Now I can see the data points themselves and how they show up. I'm going to go to the legend. I think that preferably, I mean, this is an opinion thing. I like the opinion. I like this down in the bottom. Kind of gets out of the way. And it also just kind of cleans up the graphing area. My horizontal axis, I'm going to go ahead and change that to go from zero to 360 degrees. That's good. My vertical axis, I noticed that my smallest x coordinate is 1.250 and my largest is 2.375. So I'm going to type those values in. That way my graph goes all the way from the bottom to all the way at the top. Now I'm a little bit annoyed by how it kind of cuts off the line here, but I mean that's something pretty small. You're splitting hairs at this point in time if you're getting upset about that. So you can see now it's taking up the entire entire graphing area nice and big. I'm going to come down here last thing let's see here grid lines uh, the vertical axis we have 10 different locations that we're graphing. If I choose 10 notice by the way I went up by a quarter or by an eighth of an inch on purpose now so it goes exactly eighth of an inch all the way to the top and I have exactly these values. If I choose any other value Notice it kind of gives me some weird increments in between, right? So I'm going to choose 10 in this case because of the graph that I have. I'm going to change this drop down menu and go to the horizontal axis. And I want this to have nine values. So now if I choose nine, notice that it goes through and it graphs all nine important locations, including zero and 360 in 45 degree increments. There you go. We have a nice, nice looking graph. 
um, that we've created in just a few steps. You know, that's pretty nice, pretty simple. Um, and now we have a motion graph that we can throw in a presentation that looks professionally done. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me.